All right. All right. It's time that we finally give this man right here a little bit of credit due. Some apologies. We're going to hash all of this out today on the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms, film analyst. We're going to get into the film a little bit later. But right now, let's talk a little bit about this man, Steve Spagnolo, who many of us were calling for his job very shortly after he won a Super Bowl with Kansas City in 2019. A few years later after that, in 2021, things weren't looking good. Early in the season in 2022, it appeared the defense was going to start slow, but you had injuries, multiple rookies playing, trying to learn a defense. Come time when things really matter after the bye in 2022, Steve Spagnuolo is headlining this defense that ends up helping the Chiefs win yet another Super Bowl. It's hard to believe what he was able to do in Kansas City, changing that defense over from 2018 to 2019 with some help from free agents being able to be there, but also coaching them up and being in the rightful spot to have a sack. I know on fourth down against the 49ers, two interceptions against Jimmy G in that Super Bowl, and here we are watching them score a huge touchdown against the Eagles couple fourth down stops, couple forced field goals, and they have another one. So we do owe, myself included, a lot of apologies to C. Spagnolo, who's done a fantastic job over the last year plus reinvigorating this defense, trusting in his young players, and getting the most out of them in the biggest spots. One of the things that I love to look at for these statistical things is what's called weighted DVOA. If you guys know what weighted or what DVOA is, you know that it's a very respected defense or defensive, offensive, and team ranking system. And for 2024, they were the you know the 15th ranked de defense all the way through pre and post season, and then they were weighted as the 13th best defense, which means towards the end of the season, it's weighted towards the end of the season. They were better than they were for the most of the season. So C. Spagnolo very much deserves a ton of credit for what they were able to do. And a lot of it has to do with him being able to play in, in multiple different systems. We're going to come out here in the very first play. We're talking cover one, where you have man coverage underneath. Nick Bolton's playing more of a robber underneath this middle linebacker area. But cover one, you've got one safety deep. You have another, like I said, this linebacker here. You have two zone-ish, you know, zone, quote-unquote, zone cover players. And then you got man coverage pretty much across the board tied to the running back. You got man and man. So you, you see here they're able to play man coverage with a little bit of zone underneath. And then they get a sack, getting pressure with four. They move Trevor Lawrence up in the pocket. And they're able to get a sack here on, thir on, on, thir on second down to force a, a third and long where they end up punting this football. And so, yeah, they did a really great job of multiple being very multiple on defense here they're going to play a little bit of cover four match we saw this when i did my um breakdown of joshua williams and jalen watson uh, previously a, a week ago so what we mean by cover four matches you have these two deep safeties here that are going to play out here typically you're going to have your outside corners play to this area out here so it's four cover four is basically quarters they call it quarters because each of the deep parts of the field are manned in in essence by each of these corners here but but with match you're going to see when you have a wide receiver go over the middle of the field this defensive back right here is going to pass him off and as this wide receiver goes upfield Jalen Watts is going to stick with him so they are they're multiple here as well playing cover four match being able to pass off responsibilities understanding their responsibilities but once again Getting home with four. This is a huge standpoint and something that really comes through in what Steve Spagnuolo and the defense did, especially in the postseason. Being able to create pressure with four. Mike Dana getting in there, taking that guard to town and Frank Clark cleaning up. Frank Clark had a really great season, a postseason, excuse me, cleaning up for the Chiefs. You're able to get pressure early with somebody else, and then Frank Clark comes in and closes it out. So, unfortunately, you know, he's in Denver, so he's not going to be doing that for the Chiefs in the postseason. They're going to have to find somebody else to do that. And here they're going to have a cover two man, which means you got two deep safeties and man coverage across the board. They're going to get some pressure with four here, but at the end of the day, they force an incompletion on third and long and force another punt from the Jacksonville Jaguars. We have a really 
multiple defense here, but look at where the where, look where, look where he can't go with the football. Look at the coverage here. There is nobody open in this entire football field. There's nobody open. So, whoops, I do that all the time, every single time. I need to find a different way to to use my my pen here. But either way, no one open with the football. And even if it would have been completed to Jermichael Hasty there, it would have been in a. a, a maybe a long field goal attempt so great job by the defense being multiple we've seen now cover one man uh cover one cover four a little bit of cover two man and just a little bit of cover three right here we're going to get to see with that deep safety going back in the corners here we got boom 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 you can tell that they're in zone by the way that the corner the, the corners on the outside are opening up they open up to the inside which indicates zone coverage and you can see right here that cover three um with match principles underneath cut with these four defensive players and you have what you're looking at here again nowhere to go with the football early matching up everybody nowhere to go with the football and you have your george carlotta's getting a sack right there um with a little bit of pressure before that so this is a really great display of what the chiefs were doing in the postseason and why they were able to continuously get pressure with four because they played really good coverage on the back end for the most part they're going to have some breaks here and there and some busts but at the end of the day steve spagnolo was doing a great job mixing up what they were doing with cover four cover two cover three and mixing in their blitzes in that with a, with that as well so one thing you have to understand with blitzes they do come at a price at times they're going to blitz here off the right hand side and Jalen Hurts is a very good quarterback outside of structure. So on third down, they're able to get a first down in large part because you are blitzing. You're not getting that angle right when it comes down to pass rush. So one thing I want to look at here is Brian Cook. So Brian Cook's going to be in the slot on the right-hand side, all right? And what he's doing here is he's basically going to be like a contain on the backside, but he is still blitzing. So his responsibility is no longer on the right hand side he's blitzing down so they're going to drop carlos dunlap into coverage and what that does is it puts carlos dunlap almost in man coverage on zach pascal wide receiver and you really don't want that that's not the the best way to go about blitzing and you're trying to get home immediately so right here it would have been nice to see him continue down this path because look has he's, he's got eyes over here so he sees that chris jones is here you should understand that frank clark is down here if Byron Brian Brian Cook can get down here and then make Jalen Hurts have to make a more difficult throw, a more difficult decision. You might get a sack, you might get an incompletion, you might force another punt. You know, unfortunately here, he's still rolling out to his left and gets a completion to Zach Pascal on third down, which extends the drive. So staying in your rush lanes and rush and blitzing is always always comes with a little bit of risk okay that's the part of the thing about steve spagnolo is that he does he makes calculated risks so on third down you want to blitz quarterbacks speed up their process maybe you get an interception or you get an incompletion or you get a sack and sometimes those are going to come with costs like this but at the end of the day they're a really good pressure unit steve spagnolo had a great game plan throughout the entire playoffs with blitzing coverages with different types of zone blitzes right here we're going to have a cover two man blitz so you you still have those two deep safeties here the the two high safeties with man coverage underneath and they are going to blitz i believe it's willie gay this time off off the uh left hand sideline they're going to mug up both of the linebackers if you guys listen to sports radio 810 yes uh on monday i talked about mugging up it's when you bring both your linebackers or basically any linebackers up to that line of scrimmage and show blitz they're gonna back off nick bolton and then there goes willie gay off the left hand side getting a sack so a really nice adjustment to their cover two or their, their their zone coverages where they're able to bring an extra man off but play a little bit of uh, you know a little man underneath and one thing you'll notice is that there is a player that ends up leaking out late this lot this running back here gets out to the right hand left hand side of the formation and he goes untouched no one's even there so like i said you're playing a little bit of chicken with the <laughs> with the offense but it does pay off when you have these uber athletic blitzing linebackers like a willie gay coming off that uh, left hand side of the defense being able to get underneath the tackle through there and in for a sack with frank clark to help cover up too so everything that the chiefs were doing was really working especially in the first two rounds they had 29 pressures versus cincinnati themselves that was that's ridiculous 
And before we get even deeper into this, I want to take a little bit of a stat break because it's very important to show how important C Spagnolo's, you know, basically emergence here in Kansas City has been. So over the last four seasons in the postseason, the Chiefs offense have averaged 31.8 points a game. That in of itself is insane. And when you flip over to the defensive side, they have averaged giving up 24.8 points per game in the postseason. That shows you right there the impact, the value that Steve Spagnuolo has brought into, and you have some blowups against, you know, the, the Buccaneers where the Chiefs didn't score points, and you have a couple of games where, you know, the Eagles score 35, where they still win. The Buffalo Bills score in the 30s, and the Chiefs still win. So they're able to bring in some of those different aspects. And one thing about that whole thing is you're going to have you know, some turnovers in that regard too. And the Chiefs defense has averaged just over one turnover a game in the postseason in the last four years. They have 13 total turnovers in the last four postseasons. So that's a very impressive start too. We've seen multiple games with uh, multiple interceptions, a couple with none. But the Chiefs also this past season, uh, this past postseason, had the best sack rate of any of the final four teams in the postseason. So 16% of their pressures, they had 61 total pressures, which, which was third in the postseason behind the Eagles and I believe the... Uh, Bengals, actually, funny enough, they had a lot of pressures as well. So, um, But the Chiefs were able to close in and get those sacks um, better than anybody else. The Chiefs had 27 sacks in the postseason since 2019. 16 of those came in the second half. That is how you win games. You get pressure. You generate more turnovers. You generate more pressure on a quarterback. They're able to make less quality decisions. You really get after it. And one more stat that I want to talk about is... The, the pass breakups this past season. The Chiefs corners have not been known to always get their head around and find the football. But this past season, they were tied for first in pass breakups in the postseason with nine. That's awesome. That's getting their hands on footballs. That's being able to do a lot of different things to throw, a def uh, throw an offense off and make incompletions and get to punts and get to field goals. That's a huge situation as well. So back into the film here, we have cover four. For the Chiefs, once again, where you're going to see those guys back off. And you can see that both corners, the safeties, are kind of getting back into their drops to show cover four. But there's just nowhere to go with the football. Like, this is what I mean. We're going to get to a point here at the drop back where this is supposed to, the ball is supposed to come out. It, it can't. There's nowhere to go. There's your cover four right here. There's just nowhere. There's nowhere that they can get to. You've got everybody in really good position. They're passing off properly. They're going to take here. You're going to see, you know, hit flips here. Linebacker getting on the running back here. So they have pressure in his face. You know, Trevor Lawrence is going to have to start working out this way because Frank Clark's bowling over the left tackle and he's going to get in his face. So he, they have to run out to his right and there's just nowhere to go. Everyone is covered up. They did a fantastic job of covering up guys, and especially in the red area. They didn't have a great success in terms of not allowing points, but they were key in allowing field goals in, in some key situations, even going back to this game itself. Right here, they're going to force a field goal after this um, two-play succession where it goes from the – you know, second second down here, they get a penalty, and then they, they end up having to kick a field goal. So a really great job all around. Colin Saunders forces Trevor Lawrence to really throw that away here with the acceleration that he shows. I'm going to miss that man in Kansas City. Um, hopefully we see Carlos Dunlop back because you see, you know, he's also getting pressure in the postseason, been around multiple times, and he got held right there too. So just a really great job coaching the defensive backs. And I think that the addition of Joe Cullen really allowed – Steve Spagnuolo to focus a little bit more on teaching the corners their their duties, and he has more talent, and being able to communicate that properly, I think, was really, really, really important. And then the the, prep, the timely pressure for the Chiefs on third downs was really awesome to see. This was, again, they allowed 35 points to the Eagles, but they this was a third down. It was a third and short, and this is what allowed the Chiefs to then take the lead in this football game, and they... Kicked it to Kadarius Tony, and he had the longest punt return in, in Super Bowl history. So this is one of those things that you you just you love to to watch because you are making a little bit of a risk, but you're going to get pressure out of it. And the Eagles, you know, just wanted to get this one more time. The Eagles had a 61 percent third down conversion rate in this game. That's insane. They were doing a great job against the Chiefs defense, but right here, able 
The Chiefs were able to force them into a punting situation behind the 50 and where the, the Eagles thought, you know, maybe we can get another stop on defense, but they were unable to. So the Chiefs defense on third down allowed 48% uh, of their of third down conversions to be, be had. So much better percentage outside of the Eagles game than, than it had been let on. So you get a couple guys off the edge with Trent McDuffie and Willie Gay and you force Jalen Hurts out of the pocket and out to his out to his left toward incompletion. So all of it timely pressure, timely, timely, timely. We keep talking about how important it is to force quarterbacks into situations and force them into incompletions. And the Chiefs were able to do that time in and time out with you know, there's Chris Jones. Let's just talk about Chris Jones real quick. He had one third of the Chiefs' entire pressures in the postseason last year. That's enough to uh, keep around. And when you have a guy playing like that, it does make a defensive coordinator's job a little bit easier, especially because watch how he's going to set up, you know, inside here and go outside over this guard. It's really, really impressive to watch his short area quickness. Right there, boom, boom. He's just so fast, and they, they had to react and bring Dallas Goddard into block. And when you bring Dallas Goddard into block like this, you have to, you know, you're hoping that he can get there, but you now have to worry about all of this pressure. you got Trent McDuffie coming off the edge. You have, you know, this running back here getting up the middle trying to, to block everybody he can coming off. So a really fun job of watching this entire defense get those timely pressures and then Carlos Dunlap with the hand in the face. Preparation. Film study is one of the most important things in the NFL. It's that the thing that really separates, in my opinion, college from the NFL. Because you have super athletes in college, you have super athletes in the NFL. But film study, being able to process information and learn from what you're watching is one of the easiest things to get better. And the Chiefs were really prepared for some of the things that the Eagles want to do. And they like to pepper plays when they think that they can get and gash a defense so this play is all just going to be a setup for kenny gainwell he's going to just leak out to the left hand side they're just going to run basically to the end zone or bring some guys over here and then leak underneath and try to basically set up a wall down here of players and defenders so kenny gainwell can you know maneuver his way in that's what they want to do but watch trent mcduffie okay watch trent mcduffie on the left hand side Who's going to communicate. He's going to see him coming across the formation. And boom. Comes in. This is where they forced a field goal right there. So uh, that's a timely play in a situation where the Eagles are trying to force communication errors. And see how you can process information to maybe get a touchdown. Because if Trent McDuffie continues here. It's going to be Kenny Gainwell and one man to beat. And possibly score a touchdown. Like, that's just what it was going to be. Look at all this space. He probably scores there. Um, I mean, Nick Bolton's fast and everything, but I think Kenny Gainwell can, can probably get into the end zone. So a really nice display of smarts, intelligence, and seeing the, the entire field underneath as a possibility to be attacked by the Eagles. And they do the exact same play later. They just flip it. And this is a really good understanding from the Chiefs defense. Again, seeing that they kind of lose themselves right here. But it's third and ten. And watch Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton's now got his eyes on on the running back, eyes on the quarterback. He sees the cross coming, so he's going to kind of key on that this time. Boom. He goes around Dallas Goddard and stays with Kenny Gainwell, making sure that he only gets, you know, three or four yards on the play. This is two plays. They just switched it, tried to get an easy touchdown the first time, and tried to get an easy first down conversion the next time. But they were able, they were up for the task of reading that defense, or that offensive play, and rallying to the football, making a key stop in key situations, that both of those forced field goals. That's huge in that game. Otherwise, they lose. They lose definitely. So really, really fun to watch them be as communicative and understanding of the offense that's unfolding right underneath them. So we're back to being able to create pressure with four. The thing that I continue to come back to is that typically in previous years, we had seen the Chiefs be unable to generate pressure with four. We can talk about Joe Collins' impact here because he had a huge one in teaching a lot of these guys, but Spags on the back end really allowed this to be how the Chiefs could get home with four and create pressure with four because, once again, there's nowhere where he can go with the football. 
These are coverage sacks. These are coverage incompletions, coverage throwaways. Really excellent game plan all around playing two-man coverage here where you have those two safeties back end and you just got man coverage underneath. And then Joe Burrow has to figure out where to go with the football. And by the time, you know, if, there anybody, if anybody was open, it didn't matter. The pressure gets home and then he forces a throw away. That's just team defense at its finest. You have the coverage on the back end leading right into what could be, you know, a sack from the, the four guys up front, but they end up throwing, you know, forcing a throw away. So just continuously being able to get pressure with four um, in the postseason was a huge boon for the Chiefs defense. And they do, they're going to do it a little bit again after this play. And this is where those pass breakups come, all right? He's able... They, they, do, they do get pressure in his face. And this is a perfectly thrown football by Joe Burrow in the back of the end zone to Hayden Hurst off the left-hand side here. But it's an excellent job from the another leader for the Chiefs defense and Justin Reed staying right in that hip pocket. You've got a little bit of safety help over top. But just staying in that hip pocket, all right, playing the receiver, gets in that trail position. He plays the hands perfectly outstretched to force a pass breakup, and then another field goal. That's the one thing that I keep coming back to, how many times the Chiefs were able to force field goals in key moments, in key situations in these games. Those four-point differences are huge in these games where you only win by three, That's and that's something the Chiefs did in both you know, AC Championship and the Super Bowl right here. Beautiful pass breakup by Justin Reed and still getting pressure up front with four guys. So this is in a very impressive display in critical moments. I think the Chiefs played better than they had at any point throughout last season in critical moments. And this is the future of Kansas City with their coverage, all right? There's, with the Eagles come out in five wide, nobody in the backfield. They don't get pressure immediately, but they do force a little bit of movement to, out to the, to the left here and force another way out. Look at the coverage. We, we've seen this. We're going back to it, continuously going back to the coverage. There's nobody open. There's nowhere to go with that football. Jalen Hurts gets a little bit of pressure up the middle, and you know Colin Saunders runs him out and technically records a sack. So, Or maybe they just give him a, a loss of or a gain of one on the play. I don't really remember how that play was scored, but this is the future of coverage in Kansas City, guys. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at Jalen Watson, uh, Trent McDuffie, hopefully Legereus Sneed, but you've got Josh Williams back there too, and Br Br Brian Cook and Justin Reed, very, very young secondary group that continuously was able to be in the right position at with as young as they are was one of the more impressive things that I watched throughout the postseason. So I'm very excited to see what they're going to end up doing with the back end going forward. And we're going to see some development from them, development from the safeties. And at the end of the day, Steve Spagnuolo's wheelhouse is training and teaching secondary members. That's what he was. He used to be a, a you know cornerbacks coach. So he's really up to task here and if with Joe Cullen coaching the front four and Brendan Daly right now with linebackers I think they're in a really good position to set themselves up to have extreme success and be a top 12 defense next year I'm really excited about what they're going to do but again hats off to Steve Spagnolo. so many apologies due for him calling for his job at multiple times throughout the you know multi for multiple seasons I still don't agree with everything all the philosophies but we do see Joe Cullen having a little bit of impact on the players that he's brought in. So I hope that you all enjoyed this very much because I think we all need to take a step back and appreciate what C. Spagnuolo has done. Part of two Super Bowl winning teams on the defensive end in top 13, you know, top 14 teams in weighted DVOA on the defensive side going into the Super Bowl and winning them. So I think that they're in store for having an even better defensive season going forward. They're young, they're fast, they're hungry. I think that that makes a big difference even though they won a Super Bowl. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just give Steve Spagnuolo his flowers, y'all, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.